We got Adam Milstead back here on the program. He's going to be taking on Mike Rodriguez at UFC on Fox 31 on December 15th. Adam, how are you, man? What's up, man? How are you? I'm doing well, man. It's good to catch up with you again. And I love the uh, Christmas festive spirit. You got the tree up and everything like that. And that's kind of where I'm going to start things here. How was your Thanksgiving? Uh, Thanksgiving was good. Anytime I get a chance to spend with the family, it's, uh, it's a great Thanksgiving. Okay, that's good. Any, I guess you had to cut back a little bit. You know, I know at 205, we talked about this last time, we got to cut out the beer and everything. So what else did you have for sacrifice this year for uh, for Thanksgiving? Uh, it was one of the hardest ones was uh, pumpkin pie. Um, I may have cheated once or twice, you know, small pieces. But uh, yeah, whenever my mom bakes pumpkin pie, it's like some of the best food in the world. But I had to say no to as much as I normally eat. Yeah, well, you should just put the rest of it in the freezer and then have it after the fight, right? That would be good. Oh, I think I will, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Um, we haven't seen you fight since March. Uh, did you want this much time off, or are you looking to get in there a little bit sooner? Uh, I kind of wanted to get in there sooner um, on account of, like, my, most commissions, they either go a six month to a, um, a year as far as medical requirements. I wanted to kind of stay within that same medical requirement, so I don't have to pay all this money to go get blood work and physicals done again, but... Unfortunately, here I am, and I'm working on getting all that stuff taken care of. And I know your last fight didn't go your way in that one, but you fought a really tough guy in Jordan Johnson, and you actually went to a split decision. Um, I know it's not often you can kind of take away a lot of positives from a loss, but do you, in the in the sense that you know Jordan's still undefeated, he's still one of the you know the best guys in the division, and you went to a split decision with him? Uh, I should have beat him. I should. I I just uh, the best way I can describe that fight is he's a bit better decision fighter than I am. Um, I'm a type of guy who wants to go out there, win, put on a show, and, and do it in the most brutal way fashion. Um, you know, giving credit to Johnson, he had a tough chin. He was able to deal with a lot of uh, a lot of my heavier punches and, and stuff like that. Um, you know, the guy's a tough guy, but uh, is he an exciting fighter? No. I mean, he was a ladder the whole match. He leaned on me the whole match. And uh, I don't know. I, I still have a little bit of hard feelings towards it. I know he... Ended up dropping down to 185 for his uh, next fight after me, so we can kind of understand who won the mental war in that aspect. But uh, as far from me, the best thing I could gain from it was just the simple fact that, you know, I, I was, uh, you know, I was able to deal with an undefeated fighter. I don't think he should be undefeated, um, but I was able in there, and uh, you know, I rocked him every single round, and plenty of people told me I won that fight. So that's all I needed. Okay, I like that. Um, let's talk about Mike Rodriguez. He's got that 9-3 and three record. Uh, how do you feel like you match up against him? I think I do well against him. I don't think he's fought anybody uh, as far as striking-wise as good as I am. Um, you know, now, granted, he's a Muay Thai fighter, and that's his strength, and it would be kind of silly to, to fight a guy in his strength, but uh, I believe I'm better at it than he is. Um, he's just uh, he's one of those types of guys who, who go out there and uh, – you know, they just want to trade blows back and forth. And that's not me. I, I'm a little bit more strategic when I when I fight. Um, and I don't think he's kind of grasped that concept. Um, but when we get in there, we'll see how it happens. I mean, he might hit me with a big shot. I might have to turn into a wrestler. I don't know. What about the strength and size in this fight? I, I don't imagine you guys are going to be too much apart. But uh, Mike used to fight at middleweight and used to fight at heavyweight. So I'm thinking, uh, you know, as far as the advantage goes, I would, I would probably give that to you just with the fact that, like, you fought bigger guys before. And we talked there a little bit about the experience. Yeah. Uh, as far as the dealing with bigger guys, I mean, uh, the cardio aspect isn't as much when you get the light heavyweight. You know, like, as far as the cardio is what helped me when I was in a heavyweight division. But now that... I mean, a light heavyweight, at least I had the ability to deal with the strength of someone like that. Uh, but not taking anything from Mike. Mike uh, is, is a good fighter. Um, and uh, his last fight with, uh, was it Devin? Devin Clark. And uh, Devin Clark's a very strong wrestler, and uh, he was able to um, stuff a couple of his takedowns, which is pretty impressive. So not taking anything away from Mike. Mike's a, a strong guy, but uh, I believe I'm going to be one of the stronger opponents he's ever gone against. What about training camp? I know oftentimes you'll do a bit of cross training, uh, you know, in terms of uh, your preparation. Did you do that for this camp? A um, little bit here and there around the city, not so much outside. Normally where I would go would be uh, Cleveland up to train with Stipe. Um, this fight camp, I, I have kind of stayed around a tight niche group of guys here in Pittsburgh. Um, and it's very difficult to really uh, find a fighter like Mike and, and around Pittsburgh. Um, so we, 
you know, we're, we're trying to find South Pauls who are above six foot, six foot three, you know, I mean, he's sitting at six foot four. So it's, um, it was tough. So a lot of what we've been working on is just utilizing a strategy, you know, just focused on mitt work, um, you know, a lot of grappling, a lot of wrestling, pretty much everything you can think of, but just dealing with the strategic process of being, or dealing with a Southpaw fighter. Uh, a lot of people don't have that opportunity. And, and you know, that's why Southpaws normally have an advantage inside the cage or ring uh, is that they normally go up against Orthodox fighters like us. Um, so I've, uh, I've got some good coaches and we've been working on a pretty good game plan. Who are some of the training partners you get to work with uh, for this camp? Even if they're not like super notable, who are some of the guys yeah. you get to work with? Uh, my buddy, Josh Bram is, he should be in the UFC right now. Josh has fought on Bellator. He's fought on some big cards. He's a, a great fighter and he's six foot four as well. Tom Lanky, um, and is an incredible striker. Um, you know, I'm working with other guys. So some new and upcomers, uh, Dalton Rosta, he's out of, um, you know, uh, Newcastle, Pennsylvania. I think he's down Florida right now. He's a great wrestler. Um, uh, dealing with a lot of good wrestlers here in Pittsburgh. Um, not so much. It, it's tougher to find as, uh, traditional Muay Thai fighters in Pittsburgh because we're known for wrestling and grappling and stuff like that. So, uh, wrestlers are, uh, they're everywhere to be found. And there's a good one, but, uh, you know, those are the two guys that have been helping me the most in this camp. And of course, uh, my coach is Bill Cassidy, uh, Chris Williams, um, and, uh, Kamal Worthy, Worthy is going to be, um, uh, me for this fight. Excellent. Yeah. That was going to be my next question. Um, and, and I imagine the cuts going well, you mentioned making those sacrifices for Thanksgiving, pumpkin pie, not, not in, uh, not, not in the equation. Right. Yeah. No, uh, it's, uh, the weight cuts going good. Um, you know, I'm a little bit further down than I need to be right now, um, which is not too bad. It means I can eat a little bit more. Um, but, uh, you know, body's feeling good and uh, getting ready for war. How do you see this fight playing out on December 15th? My hand raised. That's it. You know, I don't like to make assumption knockout submissions. I like to go wherever the fight takes me. Um, I do want to finish this fight. And I'll do anything I can to finish it. I'll, I'll go into my heart first, basically. You know, that's... Uh, I'm not leaving in the judges' hands this time. That was a pain in the ass dealing with people who, you know, some people say I won, some people say I didn't. I don't want it. I don't want any decisions. I just want to go out there and want to win decisively and want people to realize that, damn, he's a, you know, force to be reckoned with in the light heavyweight division, you know, and then eventually I like to fight George Johnson again because I know I can knock his ass out. How many more fights do you have left in your UFC contract? Uh, this is it, man. This is last one and it's not i don't want it to be the last one and uh i'm gonna do everything i can to make sure i get another contract um but it, that's the kicker for me it's like it's at this particular moment i'm not going back to fighting regional shows i'm not going back to fighting fights in bars and garages i mean this is it if i don't get another contract with ufc and I'm, I'm done fighting and that's what sucks it's the idea is that I, I have plenty more fight left in these hands. And it's just like I'm at a position in my life where where it's like everything is coming down to that, that 15 minutes inside the cage. And it's uh, it adds a lot more stress to the life and a lot more stress to the fight life, I should say. Um, I don't know, man. We'll, we'll see what happens. You know, I want to go out there. And if this, if this is my last fight, I want to at least – just get an absolute complete battle with this guy. You know, I'm talking blood, spit, mash everywhere. You know, I'm talking like this guy is just throwing down. We put on a show for all the hardworking Americans out there who are going to be watching this. You know, it's like we, uh, you know, I, I think we're on the same page. The, the whole reason why we're in the UFC is because we put on shows because, you know, we're energetic and people want to watch us fight. And I hope that when we both go out there, win or lose, that we do that very same thing, that we go out there and put on a show and we're energetic and people want to see us fight again. Um, so, but uh, another contract is the goal. Um, and if that doesn't work out, then a good last fight to really make it worth, you know, the exit from the sport. I got to ask the obvious question, though. I mean, let, let's say, you know, you, you don't come out on top in this fight and you're, you become a free agent. Uh, if Bellator came with an offer, is that not something that would interest you? Or would you say it's UFC or nothing? At this point in my head, it's UFC or nothing. Uh, Bellator has to come with one hell of a contract, you know. Um, 
And I, I don't think I had the pull nor the, uh, you know, the, the, the background to be able to really propel into another promotion with the same or if not better contract than what I was getting in the UFC. UFC has taken care of me. Um, you know, there, there's been some ups and downs, but what is it in any sport and any job that you do? Um, you know, UFC is the, it's the NFL of mixed martial arts. It's what you train your ass off for your entire life to get to. When you're there, you do what you can to stay in it because it's that is what's going to, going to really, you know, make your career just go where you want it to go. So I don't know. If Bellator comes with an offer that just like blows my mind, of course I'll do it. Um, but uh, my pride is just in the, in the idea that I get a chance to do it for all these people who have supported me and pushed me in the right direction and being able to do it on the, on the biggest, biggest stage in the world. And we're looking forward to it, man. This is a stack card, December 15th, UFC on Fox 31. You're actually going to be a part of history because it's the last uh, card on Fox before they go over to ESPN. So that's kind of neat. But uh, Adam, I always appreciate the time, man. Just remind people where they can find you on social media. And if you have any sponsors or shout outs, the floor is yours, man. Yep. Yeah, uh, guys, check me out at, uh, at Adam Milstead um, on uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, all that good stuff. Uh, and then uh, sponsors like to thank uh, Pure Spectrum CBD, uh, LED decoys, uh, Jigsaw Massage, um, and uh, Legacy Medical Centers. Um, and uh, there, there's a couple more that I can't think of off the top of my head. But uh, and of course, always, like always, thank you so much, Mr. Lynch. You got, you rock, dude. You are amazing. Uh, thank you so much for everything. It, and if this may be the last time that we get a chance to do something like this, I want to say it's been an honor. Well, thank you. But regardless of what happens on, I mean, we'll, we'll do something after for sure, regardless of what happens. So we'll, 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 we'll see what happens there. But uh, either way, um, yeah, looking forward to the fight. And uh, by the way, I, I didn't even mention this bonus points for the Christmas tree and the cat in the interview. I always like that to see different stuff spruced up. So you, sir, get some bonus points there. Yeah, thanks, man. <laughs>